What is the best loophole that you've ever found? I didn't find this loophole but my friend did, a few years back, an online store had this promotion where whoever spent the most money over a month would get free round-trip airplane tickets to anywhere in the world. My friend, who's a ducking genius, found that one thing you could buy on the site was a gift certificate. So he bought a $25 gift certificate and kept spending it on another $25 gift certificate. So he ended up spending $25 on round-trip tickets to Australia. My brother once yelled last one to jump in the pool is gay, and then jumped into the pool. However, I figured out that if I did not jump in then technically he would be the last one in the pool, and he is still gay to this day. I used to work at Papa John's to pay my way through college. There was a contest we had where if you got someone to upsize their pizza from like a medium to a large for an extra $2, you got points towards movie tickets. A large was simply $2 extra normally anyways. Anyone that ordered a large, I simply put in a medium and upsized it. I won every ducking week. My coworkers didn't notice this obvious loophole and it didn't cost the customer extra so I didn't have a problem with this morally gray area. Free movie tickets every week was a huge in college. Hey if I'm a customer and you have arbitrary targets to meet and can get some weight towards them with zero negative effects on me, be my guest. My high school had a stupid rule that banned you from attending prom if you went to a Saturday detention that semester. I got in trouble and was assigned to SAT. D Hall, but my girlfriend really wanted to go to prom. I just kept skipping it and they kept adding more until they rolled it into a day of actual suspension. They had no rule barring you from prom for an out-of-school suspension so I got a day off and took my girl to prom. What an odd rule to have. Arbitrary nonsense rules are what high school is all about. My brother got free parking for pretty much his entire time at university. It was that golden period when the pay parking kiosks were able to accept credit cards, but before they were actually connected. They'd read a card and check it against a locally stored list of band numbers, and once a month the meter maid would download the transactions, process them, and update the blacklist. My brother found that they'd accept those prepaid gift cards if they were backed by Visa or MasterCard, but couldn't check the available balance, so he'd buy one, use the balance up on whatever, then use the card for parking until the end of the month when it'd get processed, found to not have funds, and banned. Rinse and repeat. Guy saved probably $2,500 over his degree. Edit y'all can stop telling me this is illegal, I don't give a flying duck and you are far from the first to say so. I can't remember when it happened, but it was years ago. I think it was Nestia, or some other canned tea, but if you bought a case of tea then there was a coupon on the box for a free case. Except it was on every case, so now you have case number 2 and another free case coupon. All the tea could be had. When I was in high school I applied for a summer job with the county. As part of the unbiased application process, each applicant was asked to take an intelligence test. The test consisted of about 80 questions. Each question was four or five line drawings, and you had to put an X in the box next to the one that didn't belong. Pretty easy. I happened to notice, though, that the test paper was two-part, which is two sheets of paper that are attached together back-to-back with a sheet of carbon paper in between. I could peel the sheets apart and look inside, the second sheet just had a bunch of boxes printed on it, and I could see from the first few questions that I'd answered that the excess I'd marked ended up in the printed boxes on the second sheet thanks to the carbon paper. So, I did all of the questions with obvious answers, and if I was unsure, I just peeled the paper apart, noted where the box was printed on the second sheet, and made sure I got it right. Of course, I got 100%. I figure that if you can cheat on an intelligence test, you're pretty smart. I'd like to think that you pass the real test. There was a drink machine in college that was 75 cents for a juice. If you put a dollar in it gave you five quarters in change. I got a juice every day for months before they finally fixed it. I was working maintenance at McDonald's when they did a Best Buy Bucks promotion. Large sodas and large fries had a scratch off that was worth at least one dollar at Best Buy. I would go through the trash daily, pulling out all the discarded scratch offs. I got a free computer that year for Christmas. I also had the poor cashier at Best Buy in tears. She had to manually scan each scratch off and verify the dollar amount. My roommate at the time bought a car with his Best Buy bucks. He sent in a ton of self-addressed stamped envelopes to get game pieces. Each game piece had at least $1 of BB money, but some had $3. There's a law in Vermont that doesn't require the sender to provide postage for the return envelope on NSAIS. So he had all his game pieces mailed to a P.O. box, edit, may have been a forwarding address, in Vermont, 
thus saving 37 cents per entry. Then he had all the game pieces bulk shipped to his home. Much cheaper than spending 37 cents per entry. Once he got his game pieces, he peeled all of them, collected his Best Buy bucks, and went around buying MP3 players from stores. Best Buy got wise to this pretty quickly and had a $200 spending limit per day, so he'd travel around the entire metro area hitting every single Best Buy and spending $200 at each one. Then he sold them on eBay as new in box for like $10.20 off the retail price. I think he made around $10,000. It was a lot of work, but it beats working I guess. Edit, I am aware that the last line is contradictory. It was a joke. Also, we don't live anywhere near Vermont, the whole point is the loophole to save on postage and then have everything sent from Vermont to where we live. Using LimeWire to download LimeWire Pro when I was in high school. Hold on there, that is the worst one of them all for shame. For a while McDonald's had a promo where, when you walked in, you could scan a QR code and possibly get free food. However, different locations and different cutouts had different codes. I took pics of as many unique codes I could find, put them all on a handy PDF, and scanned them all using an Android device and an iOS device before lunch. I got free extra value meals regularly. In fact, I still had a couple free ones left over when they stopped the promotion. You may be responsible for killing that promotion. This kills the promotion. Our local Tesco accidentally had two offers for Terry's chocolate orange at once, so if you bought four, or a multiple of four, they gave you 50p. Tried not to abuse it since if they noticed they change it, but bought four chocolate oranges with other stuff through the self-checkout every day for almost two weeks before they corrected it. I planned to save them for Christmas presents but Christmas was four months away, and you know how delicious Terry's chocolate oranges are. Edit, to all non-Brits out there since apparently they're not sold elsewhere, they're ducking delicious. If you ever come to England do yourself a favor and buy one, or find a foreign confectionery shop and hope they sell them there. I swear sometimes life gives you heaven just to take it away. Took a survey course in college, which basically amounted to a course the school was planning to offer in the future, but giving the professor an opportunity to fine-tune the curriculum before officially offering it as a class. Easy enough course, got my credit, went home happy. Next semester the course went live and was offered under a different course number, but the description was identical. Signed up, never attended a class, took the final and got my credit again. Back in the day, two five-piece chicken nuggets at Burger King cost less than a single eight-piece chicken nuggets. Me and those two extra nuggets were laughing all the way to the piggy bank. Back in the 1960s, the school district in my hometown was broken up and absorbed into the surrounding districts. Fast forward to 2003. I'm applying to colleges. I discovered that there is a scholarship fund for people living in that old district's area. The district is gone, but the scholarship still exists. I applied, and got the scholarship. I don't think there were any other applicants. A lot of scholarships never get awarded or only have one or two applicants. Always good to search out as many as possible. My high school gave out a bunch of scholarships when I was a senior. I was the only one that applied to the Young Democrats one and I got it. I was also the only one that applied to the Young Republicans and got that one, too. They were all given out at a big assembly at the end of the year, and they read them off in alphabetical order. So, they said the recipient of the scholarship for the Young Democrats is, and my name. Polite applause, I get up on stage and get the check. The recipient of the scholarship for the Young Republicans is, and me, again. I had to turn around and walk back across the stage and get that check, too, to a lot of good-natured laughter at what I had pulled. An actual enlightened centrist. Italian restaurant my family loves had a candy claw machine we played every time we went. But the trick to learn was, if the claw closed all the way it thought that meant you didn't get anything, and would let you play till you did get something. This means we would go for individual items that would fit into the claw perfectly, one sucker, one laffy taffy, so it would close all the way, instead of trying to get a big lot all at once, that way it wouldn't register the candy and we could keep going and going. We actually took so long once our parents made us leave before our turn was up and we still left with handfuls of candy. The best part? It only cost a quarter. They no longer have that machine frown. We discovered one in a pizza place where if you held the joystick up and right as it was opening for some reason it would give you 99 more tries. Some bug in the programming. We nearly had that thing empty by the time we left. That's not a bug, it's a debug mode that didn't get disabled edit, 
I make some boring ducking comments. This is one of the most boring comments I've ever made edit to, who do fuke edit, 4 months later. Why the fuck did this comment get 6,458 upvotes? What the fuck is going on? Brings a whole new meaning to not a bug, it's a feature edit, a much needed and ill-forgotten s. It's not a bug, it's debug.